Good morning! I don't know if this is a good decision or a bad decision, but we will figure it out together. Good morning, my little raindrops. Welcome back or welcome home. My name is Desiree and I'm so, so glad to have you here. Welcome to episode two of Making Every Moment Count. Today, I am doing my own nails at home. So for context, I've been getting acrylics done for over a year. It has been over a year. I have invested a lot of money in getting my nails done. The main reason why I do this is because uh, like, I'm an anxious nail picker. So when I don't have acrylics on, I would typically pick at my cuticles, the skin around my nails, and there was a time where I was a very intense nail biter. Thankfully, I moved past that stage, especially because I got my nails done. Now that I've graduated university, I want to be even more responsible with my money, and so when my siblings asked me, like, what do you want as a graduation present, I specifically asked my sister for a at-home nail gel kit, which she did get me, and I'm so incredibly grateful. I had a very good feeling that this is what she was going to get me out of like all the other options I'd given her because uh, she is a certified esthetician. She used to have her own salon and everything until she moved on to other things, but I got some tips and tricks from her on how to do this properly at home because she did tell me I can take the acrylics off myself which is what I'm going to attempt today. Am I terrified? Yes, I definitely am, but that's why we're doing it together. I'm telling myself it's going to be fine. I'm going to follow the steps she's given me. I'm gonna to try to do this in like a couple bursts, so I'm not gonna do the entire process all at once because I feel like I'm going to go insane if I do that. But we're going to go through the kit that she got me. It's from Le Manoir, which I have been eyeing that company for almost a year now because I've been wanting to learn how to make my own nails for a long time. I just never actually invested, but I can guarantee, well I can't actually guarantee because I haven't used it yet, but this is far less expensive than going to the esthetician. I'm not saying I'm never ever going to go get my nails done at a professional nail tech again. I probably will because it's a nice little self-care event, but as a homebody, this is more my thing. We are going to go through every little goodie that came in this box. This is the Le Manoir Gel Care at Home Kit, I think that's what it's called. There are two things I got that did not come in this box. The first one is acetone. I know acetone is not the best thing for your nail health. My sister said that to take it off, especially the acrylics, this is what I need to go with for like the first time. So I'm gonna listen to her. But I got a bottle of acetone as well as a nail brush. Uh, just that, you know, you can get these at any drugstore but just a little nail brush so that once I get all of the acrylics off, I can clean my nails properly. Now onto what you get into the actual kit. You get a buffer, a nail file, one of these cuticle pusher hook tools. I have no idea what it's called in English. Uh, in French, it's just called outil crochet, so like it's a, a hook. Then you also get a cuticle trimmer, and then you get, this is like the little scraper thing to help you remove the gel and the acrylic. And then on the other side, you also have one of this little pusher thing. You get a gel care guide, which this comes with every order. You also have um, just the attention with like all the things you really need to be careful. You get a gel removal solution. This is your top coat. You get a cuticle oil, which I will take out of the box right now. This is a cuticle softener. These are some gel touch-up pads. This is your base coat. These are the gel removal pads. So these are specifically to put with the foil to take the gel off. Ta-da! I'm gonna be doing this at my desk, so I brought a towel. Now we're gonna get right into it. I'm slightly kinda terrified, but it's fine. It's fine. We're gonna read the instructions. Uh, basically, what is the first step? The first step is to file off 80% of the gel. So. To do that, you use your nail file. I don't think I'm gonna like cut my nails or anything. I'm gonna file them down once I get to that point, just because I do wanna keep some of the length, but not that much, so just a file will be enough to file that off. <sighs> I'm thinking I should probably like put something, like watch something in the meantime. Okay, we're gonna get to it. It's a bit tricky because I have no idea what's the 80% mark of like 
you have filed off 80% of the gel. I have no idea what that is. This is all very new territory. This is kind of fun. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, as I have mentioned. And I'm glad that I finally am getting to do it because I feel like university really messed up my sense of self-care. Like, I don't, I don't know how else to put it other than messing up my sense of self-care. I had a very hard time prioritizing self-care during school. My main form of self-care was reading, which it's great. It's a wonderful way to taking care of yourself, doing something you love. But when it came to like actually taking care of myself physically, uh, you know, like doing a face mask or everything showers or stuff like that, I would neglect it quite a bit because I'd be thinking like, Oh, I don't have the extra time to use like a fancy body scrub in the shower and then, ex you know, exfoliate and then do a face mask and do all of that. I wouldn't have the time because I'd have to be reading for school or writing a paper or doing something else or I would be too tired even to do that. And so now that, you know, school is done and my job is entirely remote, and I have full control over how I set my hours, I now realize that I can start doing self-care things like doing my own nails. And it feels really nice because you're taking care of yourself. Could even be just like going on, a, on an evening walk. Like that's something else that my boyfriend and I have started doing. We had to slack a little bit over the last few days because we've been traveling. We're picking it back up tonight. Once he gets back from work, I'm gonna pause what I'm doing and we're gonna go outside, take a nice walk. I miss being able to take care of myself physically before anything else. Taking care of myself physically became not even second place. I think it fell down to like fifth place or something like that with everything that I'd had going on in my personal life and then my school life and then my work life during school. And that's terrible because you only have yourself for the rest of your life. I'm sure you've seen and heard that countless times before. The only person we genuinely have by our side until the day we pass is ourselves. So it's important that we take care of ourselves, whether that be mentally, or taking care of our body or taking care of you know this is taking care of my body but it's also taking care of my mental health because i get to spend a little extra time just with myself that's something you don't really get when you go to a nail salon and i'm really appreciative of that and i'm so grateful to my sister for getting me this kit and not only that um it was really like a, a self-care galore for my graduation presents because my sister got me this nail kit and then my brother and my sister-in-law got me a shark hair thingamajig which I used in my last video. I'll need to learn a bit more about how to use it but it was really fun to use it and just take the time and not try to rush through doing my hair because I remember if I chose to do my hair one day when I had assignments to work on or projects to hand in I would rush through it and not even be like present while doing my hair. I would just be like racing to get to the end. And honestly, where's the fun in that? You get this really cool tool that can do some really fun hairstyles and you're just racing through. I mean, I get it. It's part of life, right? Like I will definitely have to race through doing my hair many, many times in my lifetime. But when you have the time to like fully be present and make it a self-care moment versus like, oh, this is just going with the flow. I just need to do my hair and then I need to rush out the door. If you have that time, make the best of it because it's fun. It's so great. For some reason, this makes me feel like a kid again and I'm so grateful. I am so grateful for it. I used to love doing my own nails when I was younger. Obviously, I still love doing it now. So for like the nail colors, uh, I ended up buying myself a gel color from Le Manoir because the actual color does not come in the kit. You have to purchase that on the side. So I do have a gel color. It's just nice to know that like I, I have control over the shape of my nail, over like, you know, because sometimes they would do my nails and they would forget to put top coat on the very, very edge of the nail and that would drive me nuts the entire month that I had my nails. I'm pretty sure that's about 80% of the gel. That's off. 
one tricky thing about it is that I'm gonna be bent over like this the entire time. My back is probably gonna hurt. I really wanted to do my nails before the weekend because Saturday um, the entire family is gathering to celebrate my nephew's birthday. So my sister's gonna be there obviously and I really wanna show her like, look, look how well it worked. I'm a nail tech just like you. Just realized that the box doesn't come with like their little foil thing, which is totally fine. I mean, they have, um, one of their products is a foil dispenser thing, but I have aluminum foil in my pantry. I can just use that. I think this is 80%. I'm a little scared. It's fine. Okay. Next step. We're on to step number two. It only took me about like 30 minutes to file these down. So before you wrap your nails, apply cuticle oil to hydrate the skin around the nails. Cuticle oil also protects the skin during gel removal and helps the gel lift faster. So we're going to take the cuticle oil that comes in the little box. This was my favorite part as a kid. Like it still is my favorite part. Whenever I would go see my sister to get my nails done, she would always give me like a little massage when she'd put on the cuticle oil. And I also, I started doing this every night. Uh, I moisturize my hands and I put on some cuticle oil just to take care of my hands. I've been seeing a lot of people who share like their hand skincare routines and I'm tempted to like get a few more products to start taking care of my hands because my skin does get very dry, like just super easily. Time to wrap the nails. I'm gonna go get some foil. Some good old all can. Gel removal pads, and I'm going to use the acetone instead of the gel removal solution to remove the acrylic. This takes apparently 10 to 15 minutes. Now it recommends putting heat on it. I'm gonna do one hand at a time, I think. Should I do one hand at a time? So I just warmed up my avocado pouch and I'm gonna keep it on my hands for 15 minutes. 15 minutes and counting. I will see you when the timer is up. I have a stuff. I have five seconds left. It's about to ring. Time to test it out. Uh, so it recommends to just like take one thing off at a time. Oh, it worked, I think. Probably should have thought about taking this out before. There we go. So this is the little scraping tool. Nasty. Dude, kind of worked. Oh my God, what? I don't know why I'm so shocked. Oh wow, the acrylic turns into like a kind of jelly. That is fascinating, okay. So it says that if it doesn't all come off, you want to file it a bit more. Put this back on. I'm gonna put this back on. Keep on going. That is just, it's so cool. I'm gonna prioritize this hand first and then I'm gonna make my way to this one. I might take a break in between just because it is noon. So, you know, I should probably eat something. But, update. One hand is completely removed. My nails are really long and it's grossing me out a bit. So we're definitely gonna trim those. The next step is pushing the cuticles back. We need to apply the cuticle softener to the cuticles. We're gonna use the cuticle pusher, which is at the end of either tools that come in the kit. I also made myself a quick little snack plate because I haven't had lunch <laughs> and it's one o'clock, so.
actually going really well. So that's done. I'm gonna stop filing because I feel like I'm gonna go a little bit too crazy with it. Now I need to go wash my nails. I will be right back. Nails are all clean. I did realize that it could be filed a little bit more though, so we'll adjust. Carefully though, because I really don't want to over file every single one of them. Nails are clean. This is what we have right now. I can't believe that like I'm I'm finally taking care of my nails. Uh because I, I can tell. They needed to get the acrylic off. They need to breathe, they need to regrow, that is for sure. Literally says in the steps, if cutting your cuticle scares you, skip this step. But I have really long cuticles, they grow back really fast. So these definitely need a trim. So I'm gonna just give it a go. I feel like this is another part that I really like having full control over. Because it happened to me more than once where they accidentally nipped uh, my cuticles a little too close and it made me bleed. So being able to do it myself is actually really nice. My cuticles are all trimmed, yay. Oh my God, it's already time for base coat. You guys, we've made it to that stage. So I got the Sanest Builder Base Rubber Base Coat. I got this off of Amazon a little while ago. Um, so this kind of acts as a base coat. I have seen some videos about how to create an apex. I think that's how it's called. So I'm gonna need to like do like this with the gel. We're gonna test this out. I'm, I'm a little nervous, I'm a little excited. I'm happy, okay. I did that. I did that. Isn't that so weird? Wait, the lighting is so odd here. So I only have one hand that's done. The other hand is still like the, the it's still filed off. It's still the really long nails. I don't have the time to do my right hand. So I think I'm gonna do it tomorrow, which is, that's one of the really fun things about doing things by yourself. You can choose when, where, how, whatever. You have full control. So my left hand is completely done. I use the rose hip gel care gel from Le Manoir and I used the Zanist uh, rubber base coat. So I did a coat of base coat relatively thick, cured it one finger at a time, and then I did three coats of the rose hip oil gel. I didn't do it like one finger at a time. I did all of them, cured it for one minute, another coat cured it, another coat cured it, and then the top coat that comes in the kit and you cure that for three minutes. And then you just clean it with some rubbing alcohol and you can put some cuticle oil on and then they're all good and they're super short and I love it so much. So either I miraculously have some time to do this hand tonight I don't really like doing this type of stuff in the evening just because I go to bed early and it wouldn't, might, I don't know, it might mess with my schedule. I'm gonna see, but uh, I will check back in to wrap up this video once both hands are done. I will see you tomorrow or later tonight whenever this hand is complete. Good morning, this is day two and the nails, the nails are complete. I kid you not i'm never going back to the nail salon i don't i genuinely do not think i will ever return i'm gonna start taking this so much more seriously now i'm gonna start learning how to do designs eventually because this was one of the best experiences i've ever had because these nails look so good technically this was entirely free for me because the kit was a gift and I bought the gel color with money that was given to me as a graduation present. 
So all of this, it did not cost me anything other than my time and I had such a lovely time doing this. Did it take me a while? Yes, it did. It took me approximately two hours yesterday and another two hours today. Now, the reason why it took me so long was because I had acrylics and so I had to repeat the acetone foil process multiple times to get all of the acrylic off without damaging my nails as little as possible at least. So that's why it took longer. But the next time I do another set when I try to take these off, I am convinced it's going to take me way less time because I actually have a specific remover that comes in the kit that is made for gel nails with no acrylic underneath. So time for the debrief of how I made every moment count, especially given that this took so many hours out of my life. What did I do to make every second count? Number one, I focused on the present moment, which I know is kind of common sense to do that. If you're trying to make every moment count, try to be as present in the moment that you are at that time, at that place. But I, I'm someone who I used to be a very patient person and my patience has diminished a bit over the years and so doing this definitely helped me build up my patience a bit more which I'm very grateful for because I get annoyed at how impatient I can get sometimes and it's something that I want to work on and I want to grow a bit more in that area. So the first thing I did even though this was a long process, I was present through all of it. I took my time reading the instructions, making sure that I followed the steps very carefully. I didn't try to rush it. I tried to heighten my senses. This is actually something that I read in a book. One moment. So the practice of mindfulness is something that I've been working on for some time now and I am actively trying to apply it now that I'm doing this whole thing of making every moment count and it's something that I've read a lot about. These two books are The Practice of Not Thinking by Yonosuke Koike and uh, I, there were a lot of things in the specific book that I chose to leave but a lot of things also that I chose to keep. So basically this is a book written by um, a Buddhist and he incorporates the practices of Zen in his day-to-day -day life and he gives advice specifically on being mindful. And one of those things is really focusing on all of your senses when you're doing something. This is also something that is featured in Ikigai, uh, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life by Hector Garcia and Francesc Mirales. Uh, these two authors took the time to do a bunch of research on why people in Japan, specifically in this really small town, tend to live for many, many years. Again, many, many factors are included in this, but one of them is just really being present in the moment and being mindful of the actions that you are doing as you go about your day-to-day -day life. So when you merge these two together, being present in what you're doing, focusing on your senses, so like when I was putting on the cuticle oil, I would really focus on the smells because there are a bunch of different herbs and flowers that they've infused in the oil, so it smells amazing. So I would focus on the smell of that. When I was wrapping the foils around my fingers, I would focus on the feeling of the foil when it, you know, crinkles around your finger. Uh, when I would be filing my nail, I would focus on the sound of the nail file, you know, working away at the nail. These are all really little things that you can do to just not only heighten your experience because you're even more aware of everything that's going on. And I understand this can be an overstimulating experience for some people, obviously depending on what the smells are, what the sounds are, what the physical feelings are. So don't put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. I completely understand. I also struggle with overstimulation with certain fabrics, with certain sounds, smells, tastes. I get that. So do try to, you know, be more present with your senses, but remain within that border that just goes a little past your comfort zone, but remains within your boundaries. So that's one thing I did to really just make the best out of this experience, especially since it took me four hours and over two days. Another thing you can do is share the experience. So I shared a bunch of pictures with my sister as I was going through the process because one, she did ask me for updates, but two, I really wanted to share this with her specifically because she is the one who gifted me this. So I wanted to share first off how grateful I was and second off just how good of a gift she really gave me because this is going to save me so much money. 
it's helping me practice more self-care and being more attentive to my body, my nails, my hands, showing them some extra love. And then at, uh, towards the end yesterday when I was wrapping up this hand, I FaceTimed my mom for a little bit just to show her the process, you know, tell her like, look, look how cool this is. So we had a really fun chat about that. And so being able to share a moment with others will broaden that sense of community. And in Ikigai, they state it so clearly that it is crucial that as humans, we have relationships and communication with others. Health is not just about the food you eat, the way you move your body, your mental practices. It's also about communication and relationships. This is what's super important in this book. And you have the stats, you see the ways of life of people in this small town in Japan who have lived over 110 years old, the practices that they did every day and what led them to lead a happy and healthy life. And one of the main things was a sense of community and having relationships and communicating with each other. We're lucky enough to have access to technology that allows us to communicate with people who are miles away. And so if you can call someone, a friend, a family member, to just share what you're doing and show them, even if it's just a picture, it doesn't have to be a phone call if it doesn't fit your schedules, but if you can, that's great. If you can't, just send some pictures, send some updates to your group chat or to your mom or to your dad, to your sister, to your cousin, to a friend, whatever. Share what you're doing to share the good vibes and have that human connection relationship going on. And then step three, which I mentioned in my last video, which it, this is something I do every single day, but reflect. So throughout the day, especially yesterday, I was just looking at my left hand and just admiring like, wow, I, I did that. I actually did that myself from start to finish. And it's like, do, do you hear how sturdy that is? Th these aren't even acrylics. It's just a rubber base coat with gel on top and it's this sturdy. I was just completely in awe and I would like look at my hands every five minutes and I know I'm gonna be looking at my hands probably like twice every hour. I'm just so happy. I am proud that I did this myself. I'm so happy that I saved money. I'm really happy that I took care of myself. So I reflect on that. I appreciate what I did for myself, not just while I'm doing it, but in the aftermath as well. And step four, which is completely optional, but you can document it. If you have a journal, take a picture of the activity you did. If it was doing your nails, take a picture of your nails and put it in your journal and write all of your thoughts about the process, what was a little bit more complicated, what you learned, what you're really happy that went well, what you're grateful for, I don't know, what you did afterwards. You can put that in your journal. You can record a little vlog for yourself, kind of like what I'm doing here, except I'm gonna be posting it out to a bunch of people. If that's what you wanna do, do that. If you just wanna take pictures, do that. Honestly, it's so great to document the little things because once you put those in an album, which I strongly urge you do, because anything that is digital is technically not real. And I won't go too far into it because that's a whole other conversation, but if you have the chance to take your pictures and make them into like a physical object to print them out, please do it. Go buy yourself a photo album that has 365 slots and take a picture every day throughout the entire year and put all of those in there and put a huge, you know, 2024 on the cover and be like, this is my year in pictures. This is what I did every day of the year. Here are my little memories. You can jot down a little note at the bottom. That's actually something I used to do back in high school and I wanna do it for next year. I actually might do a little bit of it for this year, but anyways, print out your pictures if you can. So that is how I made every single moment count while doing my nails over two days, which took me four hours. Every single second was worth it. I had a wonderful time. I can't wait to keep doing it. I can't wait to get more colors, to start testing out patterns and designs and just become my own nail tech because it's fun, it's self-care, it's sort of like a meditation while you're doing it and you deserve to take care of yourself. With that, I will let you go. Thank you so much for tuning in into episode two of Making Every Moment Count. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was some sort of inspiration to you to start doing something similar and just really taking care of yourselves because you deserve it. I'm just really happy to see where the next episode takes us. And so I will stop yapping now and I will let you go. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing if you choose to join the family. And I will see you in the next one.